I'm proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm free. I'm Canadian, by the way. <laughs> What's up? We're here with some fat electrician. That's right. We're reacting again to fat electrician, who honestly is one of the goats of YouTube. Okay. I checked out like maybe two or three of his videos so far, and each of them have been educational entertaining and freaking awesome also his merch line is pretty cool so i might get my fiance that for christmas to be honest anywho what's poppin youtube welcome back we're here with more reaction content i do gaming i do reaction i do literally whatever i feel like here on the channel so i hope you like and subscribe leave a comment down below to feed the algorithm gods. also linked in the description below is the original video please go support his channel support his original video go leave a like go leave a comment but hey, while you're here too, Shadi, don't forget to stick around. I upload daily. I do whatever I feel like here on the channel. And it's nice. Daily. Daily content. That's right. Oh, you hungry? Eat. Eat. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. Code word. So I know you didn't skip the intro is... What's a good one, chat? <laughs> The code word is code word. I've never done it yet. This is the first time I've ever done that. We're, where we made the code word code word. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into it. Make your prediction now. Who would win in a fight? 200 kung fu practitioners with melee weapons or one marine with a machine gun? Based on the title of this video being the most gangster marine of all time. I feel like it's safe to bet on that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're talking about the most gangster marine ever. A man so remarkable that General Lejeune himself would declare him to be the most outstanding marine of all time. A man that was so fierce on the battlefield that General Smedley D. Butler, one of only two marines to ever receive the Medal of Honor twice, would declare him to be the fightingest marine he ever knew. Ladies and gentlemen- Does he have the same wedding ring as me? Hold on, hold on. I need to see him lift up his hand. Holy shit, he might! Rich and I have black engagement rings. That's actually sick as fuck. We're matching. Huh. Twice would declare him to be the fightingest Marine he ever knew. Ladies and gentlemen, the only other Marine to receive the Medal of Honor twice, Sergeant Major Dan Daly. Born in New York on November 11th, 1873, Dan Daly would grow up competing as an amateur boxer as well as working as a paperboy. And while working Dang. as a paperboy might seem like the useless details you throw in at the beginning to humanize the main character, in this case, it's anything but, because him working as a paperboy would create a butterfly effect through time that would change the U.S. military as a whole. You see, what? you gotta remember that this is the late 1800s, and information and news didn't spread the same way it does today, so working as a paperboy back then meant that he always got the newspaper, meaning that he had more information at his fingertips than 99% of the population. Because hmm. of this, he would be able to closely follow the exploits of future President Theodore Roosevelt and his famous Rough Riders all throughout the Spanish-American War. And this would go on to be his inspiration to join the U.S. Marine Corps, hoping that he too would be able to fight in the Spanish. Where the fuck is my mouse? So no, hold exactly on. What do on I went to go pause my mouse. Hey, Jesus! I, I, yeah. Sorry, one second. I went to go make a comment. I, pardon me. <laughs> that was a long time without me pausing. Okay, Alicia normally pauses a lot more than that and talks. Okay, I was just gonna say. Um, one. He a boxer and a paper boy. He might have a lot of knowledge at his fingertips. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of that knowledge got knocked the fuck out <laughs> later that week. I... <laughs> All throughout the Spanish-American War. And this would go on to be his inspiration to join the U.S. Marine Corps, hoping that he too would be able to fight in the Spanish-American War. So that's exactly what he would do on January 10th, 1899, Ooh. when Dan Daly would enlist in the United States Marine Corps at the age Double of 16 D. years old, coming in at only 5 foot 6 and 135 pounds. But hey, Oh my no god! That mofuck is like Captain America. I just watched the first Captain America movie, and that's exactly what he was like. He a little short, scrawny mofucker for real. Because it's not about the size. The of 135 pounds at five six is actually not scrawny, but. Yeah. dog in the fight it's about the size of the fight in the dog you see the real problem here wasn't his stature but the fact that he joined a fight in the spanish-american war and the spanish-american war ended on december 10th 
1898, exactly one month prior to his enlistment date, but the news hadn't spread that far yet, so oh. he ships off to training anyways. So fast forward, he finishes up <laughs> training, realizing the Spanish-American War is over. He's kind of like, meh, I mean, the Spanish got off lucky, can't help it. I mean, let's face it, I'm going to get the action I'm looking for at some point, right? This is America. We've been a country for like 124-ish years at this point. We've been not in armed conflict for all of like... 45 seconds at this point surely <laughs> something's gonna pop up soon so he ends up getting put on ship duty over in the don't worry i'll get to use this goddamn gun to protect my country one way or another don't you worry <laughs> the asianic fleet on the uss newark and sure enough like after a month mm. of being there the boxer rebellion breaks out and guess whose ship is the closest one to be able to respond dan daly all right, real quick, oversimplified explanation of what the Boxer Rebellion is in case you have absolutely no idea. At this okay. point in time, China had really just been opened up to the rest of the world and foreign influence is just flooding in. You have Western businesses going in there trying to make money. You've got Western governments going in there being like, hey, you guys want some democracy? And then you had missionaries going in there also trying to spread Christianity. And all of this influence came mm -hmm. so fast, so quick that a large portion of the Chinese population felt that it was too much, too soon, and they started to push back and started a nationalist movement. Part of this nationalist oh. movement was a bunch of young men that practiced Kung Fu. Now, to somebody from the West, Kung Fu looks an awful lot like shadow boxing, so they just refer to these young men as boxers, hence the term Boxer Rebellion. These boxers got oh, together- Oh, that's cool as shit. I actually did not know of the about it being called the Boxer fist, Rebellion. I knew- to run around beating the I knew of the movement for China. I didn't know that it had a term for it. <laughs> shit out of and or killing every foreign diplomat huh. businessman and missionary they could find and it is at that point that the marines get sent in so private daily and the rest of the marines show up to peking china which would later go on to become known as beijing the capital of china at which point they promptly and immediately take over a large legation center on the southern border wall of the city known as the tartar wall they then gather up all the refugees they can find get them inside the legation center and set up a defensive perimeter Things are going well, now we're just waiting for reinforcements. Problem, hours and hours go by, the reinforcements don't show up, and it's about to be dark out. So at this point, the marine leadership's thinking like, hey, the reinforcements are definitely on the way, they wouldn't just leave us here, which means the reinforcements have gotten lost, because I mean, let's face it, if there was ever a time or a place where the directions of go to the giant building on the big fucking wall wasn't specific enough, it would be in China, right? I mean, they're known for their big ass walls. It's kind of their thing. <laughs> so they're lost out there. We need to go find them before nighttime. Otherwise, they're going to get ambushed by like All right. a thousand. There's one person in chat is going, yeah, no, yeah, error. Uh, what, are you, what are you saying? Are you good? I don't know if just typing words or like, are you good, little bro? What's happening over there? Are we, what's going on? Are you malfunctioning? I just need to check. <laughs> Fucking history is nuts. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you're malfunctioning. Got it. Copy that. <laughs> I was like, I'm just, just checking. Just checking. Listen to these kung fu guys, and they're all going to get killed. So we're all going to leave, go find the reinforcements, and come back. Private Daily, you're going to stand guard here. By yourself. Now, I don't know what the logic was behind this. I don't know By if it was like, fuck Private shit. Daily, he's the new guy, he can have the shitty job. Or if it was like, hey, Private Daily's a new guy, this mission's really dangerous, let's leave him here where it's safe. Or maybe they knew he was the main character and that he had plot armor. I have no idea. Either way, Private Daily is now effectively playing goalie for America for all of these refugees. So sure enough, like an hour after all the other Marines leave, hundreds of boxer rebels show up and they're looking for a fight. Now, a couple of them have guns like muskets and stuff, really outdated weaponry. By and large, they're all carrying traditional Chinese martial arts weapons like swords, bow staffs, what have you. Some of them are even just rocking the old meat mittens, but they're looking for a fight. I hate way. to sound offensive. But is our man's double D going to turn into a fucking lawnmower? Because <laughs> it sounds like we took a lawnmower into a motherfucking uncut grass. <laughs> And this is shaping up to be one of the most ridiculous battles of all time. I mean, this is the type of stuff you get drunk at the bar and ask your buddy, like, hey, you think you could take on all 300 Spartans if you had a machine gun? Like, that's exactly yeah, what's right? about to go on That's here. what I'm saying! That's what it sounds like! Right? That's, it doesn't sound like it sounds like one of those stupid-ass hypotheticals! That's why I'm like, what the fuck? 
I mean, in one corner, <laughs> you've got an 18 year old Marine with a machine gun. And in the other corner, you have 200 martial artists with like bow staffs and shit. You literally have gun fu versus kung fu. Okay. <laughs> and here's the kicker with the entire thing. Yeah. The society of the righteous and harmonious fist legitimately and wholeheartedly believes that their martial arts training has made them impervious to bullets. Oh. Yeah. So this entire horde. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> of Kung Fu fighters just starts running at daily as fast as they can as he opens fire with his machine gun and they fight well into the night. The rest of the Marines were a couple miles away. They found the reinforcements, but now it's too dark for them to travel in this rioting city at night safely. So they've adopted a little defensive position and they're just holding position until daylight. They're literally forced to just sit there and listen to the machine gun fire and the yelling and the screaming and machine gun fire, machine gun fire. And then suddenly the machine gun runs out of ammo and then there's bolt action rifle fire, bolt action rifle rifle fire he gets the machine gun reloaded there's more machine gun fire and this goes on for hours i'm sorry <laughs> no we need to stop for a second this mo fucker started weapon swapping and then reloaded his weapon and then went back to work this mo fucker was playing a video game in real life that is insane <laughs> Have you ever played like Valorant where like you shoot, like you shoot, but the reload's going to take too long. So you gun swap. There's one on the ground. You just drop your weapon and the other one automatically picks up and then you keep shooting. Right? That motherfucker did that. And then he reloaded his actual machine gun after. And then he went back. Well, guess that's more, that's more like the sound of a machine gun, but God, God. Damn. Aggressively just gets slower and there's less machine gun fire and less screaming and less machine gun fire and less screaming and then suddenly it just stops. At this point, the Marines have to accept the fact that their friend has just died courageously in battle fighting an entire mob by himself because they left him alone and all the civilians that they've been tasked with protecting are going to be slaughtered. And now all they can do is sit there and wait for the sun to come up. So the sun comes up and the Marines start making their way back to the legation center, but they're kind of dragging their feet because, well, they know what they're going to find. They're really just there to recover the remains of Private Daily and make sure that those are taken care of. And they start making their way there. And as they get closer, they're like, Man, D Private Daily really took out a lot of these guys. That's impressive. And they get closer and they're like, holy shit, he took out a ton of these guys. <laughs> yeah, this is the most yeah, he did. Mass grave I've ever seen. And they get to the top of the wall and there's Private Daily smoking his pipe, leaning up against his machine gun. And they're like, holy shit, you made it. He's like, yeah, why wouldn't I? Well, we heard the machine gun stop firing and we just assumed that you'd been killed. He's like, no, 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 no. I only quit firing because they quit coming. Dan Daly has effectively pulled off the impossible. He is sick. I only quit firing because they quit coming. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they need a wheelbarrow just to carry his cock after that. He's there smoking a pipe, leaning against a machine gun that he just used to slaughter like 200 mo fuckers. And then drops that bar. Are you? Cr uh, huh? huh? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Single-handedly defeated 200 rebels by himself, saving all of the civilians as well as saving the day. All the Marines are like, "Holy shit! We're gonna nominate this guy for the Medal of Honor because this is incredible." All the businessmen and the delegates are like. Oh my God, we've seen what one Marine can do. And now we've got 1200 Marines. We're definitely going to make it out of this alive. Hooray. And all the missionaries are like, Oh my God, this is not what we meant when we said we wanted to make these people more holy. Shortly after this, Dan Daly will <laughs> oh, be this holy. <laughs> for the battle. And then Bad electrician, no! Bad electrician, no! <laughs> no! 
<laughs> would go on to continue serving in the Marine Corps as if nothing had happened. Okay, fast forward 15 years, now Gunnery Sergeant Daly has been involved in every military conflict the U.S. has for the past two decades. He is one of the most experienced combat veterans in the entire U.S. military, and he is a living legend in the Marine Corps. And yeah, on October fair, 24th, fair. 1915, Gunnery Sergeant Daly would find himself leading a platoon of men through Haiti during the Cacos Rebellion. Just after his entire company would cross a river, his entire company would be attacked on all three sides by over 400 Cacos rebels. Jesus! To retreat back into the river. And while doing so, the horse carrying the crew served machine gun would be shot and sink to the bottom of the river as the remaining Marines continued to cross the river before adopting a defensive position to repel the attack until nightfall. It is now okay, pitch black yep. outside and Gunnery Sergeant Daly knows as soon as the sun comes up, they are going to get attacked again. And the only chance they have is to get that machine gun back from the bottom of the river. So he takes off by himself in the dark of night. He goes gets all it out of the river? the river and just begins diving to the bottom of the river, trying to find this dead horse with the machine gun strapped to it. And after hours of trying, he finally finds this horse, Holy manages to shit. go down, untie the machine gun, come back up for air, go back down again, getting pieces, ammunition, the gun itself, the tripod. He gathers up all of this stuff, gets it out of the river, and then straps it to his back and carries it back to his men. Jesus mind, fuck! Over 200 pounds of equipment, and this guy is 5'6", 135 pounds, but he gets it done anyways. Now, Marines believe in a couple things when it comes to a gunfight. Number one, bring a gun. Number two, yeah, fair. bring friends with guns. Number yeah, three, fair, fair, decide fair. to be aggressive enough quickly enough. If you're not okay, yeah, fair. Gun, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. He's about to use this machine gun for self-defense. He's about to use this machine gun for self-offense. First thing in the morning, he gets his men together. <laughs> I'm sorry. That line was good too, man. He's, he cooked with that line. <laughs> oh man. Not for self defense, it's not for self offense. All right. <laughs> I'm up like a spitting for real, damn. <laughs> they launch an attack first, scattering the enemy into the jungle, retreating, and Daly has effectively saved himself and all. Tee up! Someone said, I don't wear deodorant for a reason. What? Do you weaponize your stink? Is that what you're trying to. What does that mean? What does that, what does that contribute to this conversation? <laughs> you weaponize your stink? I want you to know you'd be banned from Yu Gi Oh tournaments. Did you know that? Did you know there's a stink rule for Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments in real life? Someone tried to weaponize their stink at a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament before. So they had to add it into the rules that you have to shower and wear deodorant. Yep, same happened for Smash Bros as well. The first one to do it was a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament though. Smash Bros tournaments did it after. So, <laughs> yeah in in uh in super smash bros you could be dq'd you could get disqualified same thing with same thing with Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, you could get disqualified too from tournaments yeah and the Yu-Gi-Oh turning first exactly yep it happened in the Yu-Gi-Oh turning first yep Yeah, because they were trying to do is literally distract their opponent with their stench to make them unfocused. That was their plan. The same thing happened in the Smash community. Someone tried to do that. People are fucking nasty. So you saying that, you might be like, haha, I weaponized my stink, it's so funny. There's real people who are that fucking psycho. There's real people who actually do that. <laughs> like... To be fair, I work retail. It keeps people away. Wait, you actually weaponized your stink? I thought you were joking. Now I'm more confused. I thought you were memeing. Nah, I'm leaning in. This motherfucker's Asmin gold. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay, bestie. <laughs> 
of his men, earning himself his second medal. First, 1917, it's World War I, and Daly is now a first sergeant, leading an entire platoon of young, inexperienced Marines into the Battle of Bella Wood. If you don't know the Battle of Bella Wood, the Germans are just rampaging through France, making a beeline mm -hmm. right towards Paris. And mm -hmm. at Bella Wood, the US Army, the Marine Corps, the French Army, and the British Army all get together to stop the German military in their tracks. Now, this made it not only a strategic battlefield, but a symbolic battlefield, because how mm -hmm. dare you okay. stop the mighty German military? Now they're going to hit back twice as hard just to prove that it was a fluke. Because of this, right after they stopped the German military on June 1st, the French military is like, okay, we stopped them, let's take the W and head back to Paris and we'll fight from there. We don't want to get slaughtered in this wood line by the Germans because they're pissed. And it is at this point that the Marine leadership famously responded by saying, and I quote, retreat, hell, we just got here. And then the Marine Corps pretty much <laughs> dons their gas masks Fixes bayonets we just got here oh my god no straight okay here's what i need you to understand on paper the marine corps should absolutely not win this fight they are both outnumbered i'm sorry why the marine corps acted like your friend who drank too much before you got to the bar and you're like you know what man how about we just turn around and leave we you know what we're we're already pretty drunk let's let's just head back we just got here we just got here, man. Are we gonna get fucked? You already fucked up, buddy. Let's. <laughs> That friend and is the Marine. The German military is one of the most veteran fighting militaries on the planet at this point in time. And the Marine Corps is primarily comprised of a bunch that of friend is American, the one I'm mentioning right now, by the way. Combat. However, leading those 18 year old kids is a bunch of fucking badasses like Dan Daly. Okay, this video started with him being a paper boy from New York. He is now a 45 year old man with two medals of honor that has been in the Marine Corps two. since he was 16 years old. This man is a grizzled veteran that has been there, done that, and has a t shirt and he is i'm sorry there's just someone being so aggressively american in chat i have to talk about it i'm gonna pull it up on screen as well this person just started lock capsing what the fuck is a kilometer <laughs> that's 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 just the most american thing just not even like a regular stereotype just loud and proud what the fuck is a kilometer? <laughs> I only like my freedom units, hell yeah, brother. He's about to don his plot armor and fuck shit up. So the Battle of Bellawood kicks off on June 1st. Pretty much immediately, First Sergeant Daly's lieutenant gets shot, and he is now out of the fight, okay? Okay, if you don't know what mm -hmm. that means, the officer is the one guy on the battlefield that sort of kind of pretends like he gives a fuck, and he is now gone. The regulator is off the war machine, and First Sergeant Dan Daly is now in charge of his entire company, unopposed. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, June 5th, German artillery strikes the ammunition depot, lighting everything on fire. Dan Daly leads his entire platoon in, sets the fire out, prevents all the ammunition from exploding, saves the entire battle. Fast forward five days, June 10th, the German machine gun squad would try to advance on Daly's company. Daly would get up by himself with nothing but three frag grenades and his Colt 1911, using the three grenades to- Dude. Dude, he's a fucking menace. <laughs> Dude. This guy's a fucking menace. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Going against this guy, your odds are fucked. Oh my god! ...to disable the machine gun before approaching, shooting their commanding officer, killing him, and taking the other 14 Germans as prisoners of war. Fast forward ah! a couple of hours, still June... That was so much... I paused right before he said that! It got so much worse than what I thought it was about to be! It got so much worse than what I thought it was gonna be! He... He fucking crazy! <laughs> Dan Daly looks around at the faces of the young men that he's leading through this battle, and they're looking tired. They're looking like this is the worst time of their life, and it is at this point that Dan Daly decides that he needs to get aggressive enough, quickly enough. Okay, this battle's okay, effectively okay. been a stalemate for the last 10 days, and he's had enough of this bullshit, so he gets up, walks right out into the open in this wheat field that's functioning as no man's land what? between the Marines and the Germans. He looks at the Germans' line, turns around, looks at his Marines, and yells, Come on, you sons of bitches, do you want to live forever before charging at the German line? All of Okay, how much coke do you think he does? <laughs> There's no way he didn't rail a line of coke before doing that. 
Because I would also think I'm going to live forever if I rail the line of coke before sprinting at the enemy. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> of his marines that's dan fucking daily we're gonna follow him so <laughs> that's just dan fucking daily baby yep run dan in bitch two. in an act of pure hyper aggression dan daily's company would catch the germans off guard and would actually manage to punch through their line causing all the other marines to become hyper aggressive and attack as well effectively setting off a chain reaction that would lead to the marine corps pushing the germans all the way out of bella wood over the course of the next 16 days holy where on shit june 26 american high command would receive a single telegram and i quote woods now marine corps and t up someone had said someone in chat said didn't they chew cocaine gum before charging the lines i'm not sure i know that the cocaine was used a lot in warfare in general i don't know about gum though I'm not familiar with like tactics. I just know that both fuckers be cranking they shit up. So a coke game comes sounds kind of cool. I never did coke. So eh. I've done some other drugs, but not never cocaine. I never fucked with stuff that was heavy. Yeah. You know why? Because it's probably going to be too fun. <laughs> that's the reason why i never did it i was like ah i've been offered it le plenty of times but you know what it's like one of those things where you're like ah i might like that i don't want to do that <laughs> just in case i like it mm, now i'm good drop yeah i did drop acid once yeah but that's different acid like it's you just take it once and then you just never do it again that's whatever <laughs> oh my god i actually have a funny story so for those of you guys who know my friend ant ant is usually on my other channel he's on alicia x life more often not really alicia x death um but he's one of my best friends and there's one time where him and i were in call and we're both just really depressed that day so we're just kind of talking about life and i was like man i gotta go stream in like 10 minutes i gotta head out he's like all right i was like yeah i'll talk to you later man I was gonna go boof some fucking uh <laughs> I said I'm gonna boof some fucking caffeine and uh just like rip out a stream. And he goes, You boof caffeine? And I'm like, no, dude, I'm fucking kidding. I'm not shoving caffeine up my ass. I'm joking. And he's like, Oh, well, you're a content creator, so I don't know. I'm sure that they all have I mean it's more absorbent. I'm like, yeah, man, that is more absorbent. That's what <laughs> why did you think i was serious he goes have you seen how hyper you are on stream and i was like you know what he's got a fucking point i would you know what <laughs> you do not know how depressed i sound when i'm not on stream one of the times i got caught lacking my friends were in a fucking call in discord i joined it not knowing one of them was streaming and i'm a i'm a depressed as fuck right so i'm just there like oh fuck what's up guys yeah anyways i'm gonna do blah 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 today <laughs> and then they're like my fucking some of my fans were in the person's chat because i collab with them sometimes because i clap with my friends all the time and they're like is that alicia and then my friend replies to his chat and i'm like yeah i'm just i'm just i just woke up <laughs> yeah i just woke up uh i'm gonna go work on thumbnails <laughs> i'm gonna catch y'all later <laughs> It's like, like, I'm a happy, hyper person, but like being the level that I am, that's not consistent. That is not consistent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> a bitch is exhausted when she's not on stream. I'm there napping, curled up in blankets. I got a little like, I got nasty cat energy. Bitch, what do you want? I got that kind of energy, okay? <laughs> and then all of my social battery. I save it for stream and then I exert the social battery and I just start yapping. <laughs> then the stream ends and I. <laughs> Entirely giving America its first win in World War One and the Marine Corps its new moniker due to the blatant hyper aggression of the Marines, the Germans began calling them the Teufel Hunden or the devil dogs and it's devil all dogs. Of the actions of first sergeant dan daly after the battle of bella and you know Daly what <laughs> you you know what 
rightfully so you should call motherfucking dd dan daly goddamn devil dog because that's exactly what he is he has served throughout <laughs> world war one until on the 11th hour of and the his 11th men. day of the 11th month of 1918 the germans would surrender effectively ending yeah. world war one which is why in america we celebrate veterans day on november 11th which is also by sheer coincidence i'm sure dan daly's birthday the guy's <gasps> the main character i don't know shut what up that's so sick <laughs> That's so sick that his birthday's that day. Shut up, dude. Yeah. So then, dude, he is the main character. That's insane. Because Dan Daly was like the badass at the Battle of Bellawood, he gets put up for yet another Medal of Honor, potentially becoming the first man in American history to pull off three. the Medal of Honor hat trick, getting the three. Three. Absolutely everybody that was there that day all signs off on it. His men, his chain of command, they do the paperwork, they send it off to DC to get this man his medal. Then the political side is like, no, absolutely not. We don't care if he earned it or not. It's not about getting what you deserve. It's about doing what we think is fair, and we don't think it's fair that he should get three medals of honor. So we're just not going to give it to him because we said so. Go fuck yourself. So instead, they go ahead and they give him the Distinguished Service Cross and the Navy Cross, which, if you don't know, both of those are like tied for the second highest military honor because apparently second plus second equals first. You know what I would have whole ass said? You go there with a fucking gun. Oh yeah? Then you do it. You know he earned it. You just don't want to give- Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm that shit- that shit pisses me off. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I hate- I hate when someone earns something. It's some sort of external factor that's not in relation to it affects that shit. Man, I, ooh. Especially if it's government-based, ooh. Oh, oh, okay. I'm not going to rant. I'm not going to rant. I'm good. <laughs> I guess. Anyways, so he gets those instead. And then bear in mind, this is 1919, right after World War One. Like a month later in 1919, the military creates a new law that you're only allowed to earn one Medal of Honor. Okay, Dan Daly is so fucking gang. Oh, that I'm getting more pissed off. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting more pissed off. That is so bullshit. Cuz if it's earned, it's fucking earned. Why the hell is there a fucking stipulation on it? That's so stupid. Gangster, they literally had to change the rules on how many times you're allowed to achieve the highest honor in the military. After World War 1, he would retire as a Like why limit that? Why limit that? That's so insane to me. Sergeant Major having turned down becoming a commissioned officer on multiple occasions, citing that he would rather be an outstanding sergeant than just another officer. You know what's insane about that too? One step further is that like, there's so many fucking times politically where it's like, oh, I care about our troops. I care about our troops. Whenever these fuckers are running, right? And they want to get elected, whether it be for Senate, whether whatever the fuck they're running for. They take much of they care about the fucking troops. Yeah, you won't give them a fucking medal, will you? Yeah, but you want to limit the rewards they get and the acknowledgement they get, don't you? Oh, what about the veterans that you fuck over and that are half homeless? Huh? Most of them have so many mental health issues post-war that they can't fucking hold down a regular job after they're out. Huh? Do you care? Sorry, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yep. Officer. He would then go on to work as a bank security guard. Where for you know what? Actually, no, I'm not good. Do you know how many fucking times? Like, I don't really talk about what I do, like, charity wise, because I don't think it's necessary to talk about it. I think half the time YouTubers talk about it is to brag and shit. So I don't really bring it up. But I volunteered for probably for the past eight years for homeless shelters at, for cutting hair and cutting nails. Because those are the two things that people don't touch for homeless people because you get highly infected, right? That's one of the biggest issues. So I've like, I comb for lice as well. And the amount of times 
this it's veterans who come in who like will pull up pictures of what they used to look like when they served and they just want the same hairstyle holy fuck and like some of them will get the buzz down some of it will have it where it's like the pushed over like they just want to like feel like they were back then and i'm like that is so fucking sad like whole oh, fuck it's just anyway just that's why that's why it, it affects me so much and why i'm so angry about it because if you ever met these people who are affected by these bullshit ass politicians who act like they care but they really don't like when you see them firsthand it changes you so much it, anyway i'm good sorry it just that's that came from a place man i can't oh all right yeah uh for the past two years now though i've been supporting uh, a charity for troubled youth instead of supporting that one called covenant house so yeah uh it just depends i also am doing i think i'm doing a thousand snack packs uh in about two weeks for homeless for the homeless shelter near here too again I, again i don't i'm not going to mention this any more than that but yeah yeah so best thing to mention to you guys while i'm mentioning any of this shit is if you want to donate to shelters or you want to donate to food kitchens what is thing that they actually need is non-perishables do you know how hard it is for homeless people to eat fruits and veggies it is insanely difficult because they have to use the budget in order to get them fresher foods and sometimes that's what we actually want there so that we can offer it to them so don't just give things that are close to expiry like you're a piece of shit and if your mentality is like the one thing that bothers me a lot and there's so many people who have food that's about to go expired or is expired and they'll donate it to the food bank. We're obligated that if it's expired, we have to throw it out when we sort it. So you're not helping. You're actually making it more difficult for us to help other people. You're not a good person. You're a piece of shit. Donate correctly. Give a fuck. Right? <laughs> Just saying. Don't throw your fucking can in for the sake of throwing your can in. Do the right thing with canned food. Don't make it so that it's about to expire and it's better than throwing it away. No, it's not. Because I because by the time sometimes I sort some of it, it's been sitting on a shelf for a month because there's stuff we have to sort through. And by the time you get to it, it's expired. Because it's gonna expire in a week from then. And that's so whatever. Sorry, I, sorry, that just pisses me off. Cause like the the shit that veterans go through when they're out. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, if you donate, just, you know, be responsible, be smart about it. And I don't know, just treat them like fucking humans. I think that's like the basic concept. Is homeless people are also human. And if you yourself don't want to eat something that's about to go to ex about to expire, don't give it to somebody else. Like have some humanity. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's a message from Alicia. <laughs> I'm good. In years, he would be the living embodiment of the world's shittiest lottery ticket for anybody dumb enough to try to rob that bank. Could you imagine just being some bank robber trying to get some quick cash and you run into the most gangster Marine of all time? Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to throw it out there. He didn't retire from being a bank just, security. You see him come over and he's just got these grenades in his hand and it's just a solo man and you're like, damn it, Dan Daly. The triple D's. They've come for me. <laughs> guard until 1936 and john dillinger's bank robbing spree was from 1933 to 1934 so for a couple of years there there was a significantly greater than zero percent chance that the world almost got the ultimate clash of the bank robbing gangster and the most gangster marine to ever live holy and i'm gonna go ahead and write that down in my book as the coolest thing to never actually happen in conclusion mark twain is frequently accredited with the famous quote it's not about the size of the dog in the fight but the size of the fight in the dog when in reality, it wasn't Mark Twain that said that first. It was actually Dwight D. Eisenhower, five-star army general and the 34th president of the United States. Oh. Somebody that would have known good and well who Sergeant Major Dan Daly was. And I think that maybe 
just maybe he had that five foot six, 135 pound devil dog on his mind when he came up with that quote. Thanks That's actually watching. sick. Best That's cool. Let's go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. I cannot believe that my favorite favorite character from Starship Troopers is actually based off Dan Daly, and I had no idea. Come on, you hey, You want to live forever? I expect oh, that's cool as shit. <laughs> oh. That, that video was sick. I had a great time. I had a lot of side tangents in there. I was an overly passionate person. But also, in this video, I also got to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. What a crazy day. What a crazy day to be, to be here, huh? Nice. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Check out the original video linked in the description below. Don't be a dickhead. Go support the original while you're here too. I hope you like and subscribe. I upload daily. I play video games. I do reactions. I do whatever I feel like here on the channel. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.